Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to go over jelly printing basics. And I'm going to show you how to roll the ink out on the jelly plate, um, explore some textures, and then my plan is to do a ser pull some quick studies on, I have all these different papers here. Um, and then I'll pick a few that I'll build um, more layers of paint on. So mini abstract um, painting studies. So here's some of the papers I have. This is some weird packing stuff that came with a piece of furniture, brown bags, canvas paper, watercolor paper, uh, file folders, crystal paper. Okay, you can also use fabric. So these are all going to be quick studies. And I just showed you that stack because I think it's good to have a bunch of different papers or you might call them substrates ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to be using um, acrylic paint as my ink on the jelly plate. And I have a tube of open here. Um, and all that means is it has a slower drying and manipulation time, which you really want. So if you don't um, have open acrylic, you, you're going to need a retarding agent. And I'm going to mix that in with regular acrylic paint. I actually think that's a more affordable way to go. So I'll show you mixing in some of that retarding agent and rolling out paint. So here's the, a tube of Prussian blue no slow drying medium in it. I'm going to add. And if you don't have this, you're just going to have to work more quickly. Luckily, it doesn't seem too warm today. Okay, so I'm mixing that in. Now let me get this yellow oxide color. I'm trying to finish up these tubes. I actually think from now on, I'm probably not buying tubes to open. I'm just going to stick with um, adding the retarding agent. Okay. So first thing I do is I'm just gonna tap into a little bit of ink and As I'm rolling, this is something to practice. It's a light touch and I kind of lift it a little bit and I go back and forth. What I'm trying to do is get an even distribution of paint or you could call it ink. And you'll know it's even when you look at the surface, those little tacky marks look, they look even. I don't have a big glob in there. It should look even like a uh, the surface of the ocean on a calm day. Okay, so then I roll on. Again, it's a light touch. I'm not pushing down really hard. And then I go, and I have to keep re adding a little bit more ink as I go. Okay, if you press really hard, your roller is going to squishy squishy across the the surface and then you're going to get uh marks now you might want that look you could do that intentionally but i'm just trying to show you how to get an even distribution and then you can make you can make changes from there okay now the jelly plate is great for exploring um texture so I'm going to use this corrugated cardboard. To get some texture going. I can use a stencil. Okay, now I'll pull my first print. I'm going to use this funny paper. Okay. Okay, my first print will look 
something like that. Then I pull the stencil off. There's still more ink on there. So I'm going to pull another print, which um, is called the ghost, ghost print. Okay, so there wasn't enough ink on the bottom, but here's what I got from the top. I really like that. Okay, and then this is the first round of ink. Usually it takes a couple of, um, I guess I'll call it passes, to build up enough ink. So that I should be getting better prints as I go along. Okay, so that looks good. I'll do a little bit more. There's a stencil with some text. Here's some floral netting, thanks to Billy Chandler. I'm now going to try pulling on a seat. This is a thicker watercolor paper. Sometimes you can just go on the back with the brayer to make sure I'm transferring that ink. Okay, that's pretty light. I'm gonna go onto this white bristle paper here. Now you can use rice paper. I'm choosing not to use rice paper today because I'm going to build up more layers on some of these um, studies. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. All right, now Gonna do, I'm gonna do two colors now. I'm gonna show you how to do two. So, do half this way. I'm gonna unload some of my paint on this sheet of paper here. And sometimes I save these, these papers can end up being paintings as well. Okay, here's my yellow oxide. So I'm getting on there evenly and then bringing it down to that Prussian blue color. That's called an ombre when it fades like that. Okay, I have this funny little sponge. I'm going to roll it and see if I get some kind of a pattern. I can make marks like this if I want. Okay, I'm going to pull one on my paper bag. Okay, there's that one. Now I'm going to go for the goat. All right, so now I'm going to do something deliberately. I'm gonna build up some patterns here 
And then I'm going to do some direct uh, painting with a brush. Okay, I want to pull out some of that ink on this side, just on this side. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I wanted finer transparent layers. Now I'm going to put on paint on some thicker paints. Uh, and I want to create deliberately create a little some windows here that have uh, more transparent paint. So I'm going thicker, a little more impasto here, using my palette knife, 45 degree angle. And this is not open acrylic, so but because it's really thick, I should be okay. If it's not open and it's thin, it is going to dry probably too fast. Okay. All right, let's see what I get here. Looking for a piece of canvas paper. Okay, this is a different brand. Feels more papery, okay. Oh, see, that's already drying. Let's see if I can get any on this paper. So even though I added retarding agent, things are drying too quickly today. Let me add a little bit more. Let's see if I can get another print here. Okay, working fast. You know what? I'm just going to do. No, I'm doing a whole new one. All right.
Oops. Okay, that's the effect I wanted. I wanted some thick paint and I wanted some that's a little bit more transparent. That was the look. That's interesting too. This is just on a sheet of um, file folder. Okay, so your jelly plate, I can just leave this and I can rinse it later. Or even if this paint dries and I add more ink, it'll pull up on my next print. So I'm not too concerned about that. Now I'm going to go right into adding some more layers to some of these studies. So let me pick which ones. Okay, the great thing about the open acrylic is I can add water to it and I can dissolve um, and move around some of that paint. So here was this earlier one on watercolor paper. I'm really curious to see when I touch it with water, if it's gonna bleed into the watercolor paper. It may already be too dry. It appears it's already too dry. Okay. I'll try this recent one I just pulled. Not as much as I would have hoped. So maybe I need to mix more retarding agent in. but I am gonna take some of this open over here, add a little water, and I can do more painting on top of my small studies. And then I can bring in other materials such as the um, water soluble graphite. Okay, I'm going to put a thicker glob of impasto right there. I can work with um charcoal pencils. So I'm just playing with um, different effects, layering. Some of them, a composition will come together. Some of them, not. Okay. I'm going to put some impasto over here and then scratch through Scraffito.
So I'm creating little windows here. So I'm scraping pretty hard here and I can see, I'm getting a transparency. I can see some of those circles from below. I can do practice all my various techniques. I'm gonna do a little dry brush here. Pretty low contrast, that's so kind of hard to see. Does it better on this one? Okay, my goal here was to create a window. I think you can see that one better. So playing with areas of, of transparency, opaque, different marks. I can even come back with my brayer and do some more rolling. So I call it printing painting. And it's great to get comfortable with this in small studies. And then if you want to go to a larger canvas, that's fine. OK, I'm going to do one final thing, which is a favorite, which is using um, the makeup sponge. So instead of using a brush, use a makeup sponge. I'm putting this floral um, netting over it. And then I can sponge directly on certain areas. That's what I got there. Okay, another really fun thing is just to actually smear paint with the sponge and blend right there on the surface. 